Hello everyone, and welcome to our third and final episode of Train Talk in our mini-series looking at every commuter railroad in the United States. To recap, Part 1 covered all the commuter lines along the East Coast. Part 2 brought us all across the central U.S. and west over the Rocky Mountains to Utah. Finally, in Part 3, we will finish up our journey as we travel all the way along the west coast of the U.S. to look at our final eight commuter railroads. This is another region of densely packed metropolitan areas, although not quite as dense as the east coast. Once again, we will start in the north and work our way south, moving along through the states of Washington, Oregon, and California. Now let's dive right in. Starting up in Washington State, our first commuter railroad is known as the Sounder. Run by Sound Transit, this commuter train operates two different lines in the Puget Sound region of Washington State. The N, or North Line, runs 35 miles in between Seattle and Everett, while the S, or South Line, travels between Seattle, Tacoma, and Lakewood, a distance of 48 miles. This is a primarily weekday-only commuter service, with trip times scheduled to coordinate with the commuter rush out of the city of Seattle. While the South Line has some off-peak and reverse-peak commuter runs, the North Line runs just two trips a day, with two south in the morning into Seattle and two north in the evening. Some weekend special event trips are run on both lines a few times each year, usually for sporting events in downtown Seattle. One-way fares range from $3.75 to $5.75 as of 2023. Ridership for both the North and the South lines combined topped $1.2 million for all of 2022. BNSF Railway is contracted by Sound Transit to provide train crews while Amtrak provides maintenance services for the passenger equipment. Most of the route Sounder travels over is also owned by BNSF, with Sound Transit only owning the portion from Tacoma to Lakewood. Speaking of passenger equipment, Sounder utilizes the Bombardier bi-level commuter coach for its passenger car needs. Trains are hauled by diesel-electric locomotives, either EMD F59 PHI types or Motive Power Inc. MP40 PH-3C units. Sounder service began on September 18th of 2000 after a year-long period of studies and public outreach. Other than Amtrak Intercity and long-distance services, previous passenger railroads to use this corridor were the Great Northern and the Northern Pacific. Many years prior, electric interurban railroads also operated commuter trains in the greater Seattle area. Moving just 150 miles south to the suburbs of Portland, Oregon, we find our next commuter train. Dubbed the West Side Express Service, or WES for short, this single-line commuter railroad connects the cities of Beaverton and Wilsonville, located 15 miles apart on the west side of Portland. It is one of the only commuter lines in the country to travel from suburb to suburb without passing into a big city downtown. WES is owned by Oregon's TriMet Public Transit Agency. Trains run Monday through Friday on a limited commuter rush hour only schedule. Fares for the West for 2023 were set at $2.50 for a two and a half hour long pass and $5 for an all day pass. These fares cover other TriMet services in addition to WES. In 2022, the West carried just over 100,000 passengers. The Portland and Western Railroad, a subsidiary of Genesee, Wyoming, provides operating crews for WES. The PNW also operates freight traffic over the line. Passenger equipment for the West consists of a fleet of self-propelled diesel rail cars and one unpowered trailer coach. Most of these were built new for TriMet West service by Colorado Railcar. The others are former Alaska Railroad and Trinity Railway Express RDC cars originally built in the 1950s. West commuter trains made their debut with an official public opening on February 2, 2009 after nearly a decade and a half of planning and negotiations with the Portland and Western Railroad. Continuing south into California, the next commuter train service is also relatively new and utilizes a fleet of self-propelled diesel rail cars. The Sonoma Marin Area Rail Transit, also known as SMART, is a single route service offering daily trips between Santa Rosa and Larkspur on the Marin headlands just across the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. 
Northwestern Pacific Railroad previously owned the right-of-way and operated passenger and freight services. Smart's current route is 45 miles in length with expansions planned in the future. Smart service is managed by its own regional transit district that has board members from both Sonoma and Marin counties. Fares are broken up into five different zones. One-way prices range from $1.50 to $7.50. Ridership for Smart in 2022 was just shy of half a million. The diesel rail cars used for the service were built by Nippon Chariot and are very similar to cars built for the Union Pearson Express in Toronto, Ontario. Smart service began on August 25, 2017. Just a few miles south on the San Francisco Peninsula is our next commuter railroad. Caltrain operates a commuter rail service between downtown San Francisco, San Jose, and Gilroy, a distance of about 75 miles. Multiple trains run each day in each direction with service to Gilroy only provided during weekday commuter rush hours. Caltrain fares are broken up into six zones. One-way fares ranged from $4.25 to $15.50 as of mid-2023. Annual ridership for 2022 was 4.7 million. Since 2012, Transit America has provided operating crews for the trains. The railroad right-of-way is fully owned by Caltrain between San Francisco and San Jose. Union Pacific owns the tracks to Gilroy. Caltrain's active commuter fleet as of 2023 consisted of MP36PH and F40PH diesel-electric locomotives pulling Bombardier Bi-Level and Nippon Chariot Gallery commuter cars. However, most of this equipment will be replaced in the very near future. Caltrain is in the middle of a multi-year, multi-million dollar modernization program to electrify the railroad between San Francisco and San Jose. New electric multiple-unit self-propelled railcars, built by the Swiss company Stadler, have already begun to arrive and are expected to enter service by the end of 2024. Commuter service along the San Francisco Peninsula traces its origins to the Southern Pacific Railroad. In 1985, the service was given the Caltrain name when the California Department of Transportation took over funding for the struggling commuter operation. Also serving San Jose and Silicon Valley is the Altamont Corridor Express. This 85-mile-long passenger train takes riders from Stockton across Altamont Pass and through Niles Canyon to San Jose, California. It is one of the longest single-seat commuter train trips in the United States. Trains currently run on weekdays only with four westbound trips in the morning and four eastbound trips in the afternoon. Fares vary by individual station and a one-way ticket ranges from $4.75 to $15.50 as of 2023. In 2022, Ace saw nearly 400,000 riders. Trains are operated by Herzog Transit Services. Most of the Ace right-of-way is owned by Union Pacific. Only a small stretch into San Jose is owned by Caltrain. Passenger equipment used for ACE consists of diesel-electric locomotives and Bombardier bi-level commuter coaches. The two types of diesels currently employed at ACE are Motive Power Inc. F40PH-3C units and SC44 chargers built by Siemens Mobility in nearby Sacramento, California. ACE service began on October 19, 1998, originally operating under the name Altamont Commuter Express. Prior to this, the majority of the ACE route saw no regular passenger train services following the Western Pacific Railroad cancelling all of its passenger trains in 1969. The last few commuter services for this video are all located in Southern California. Metrolink is a multi-line commuter rail service that is primarily based out of Union Station in downtown Los Angeles. A total of seven lines serve six different counties across the Southern California region. Six of the lines, those being the Ventura County, the Antelope Valley, the San Bernardino, the Riverside, the Orange County, and the 91 lines all end at LA Union Station. The Inland Empire Orange County line connects Oceanside and San Bernardino, making the list of only a handful of suburb-to-suburb -suburb commuter operations in the U.S. Service on most of Metrolink's lines is on a daily basis, with more trains running on weekdays. There is no weekend service on the Riverside line. 
Metrolink also operates an eighth service under the name Aero as part of the Metrolink system, but more on that in a minute. Metrolink's fares vary by individual station. One-way fares are priced at anywhere from about $2 to $17. In 2022, Metrolink saw a ridership of over 4.1 million. Amtrak provides crews for all Metrolink trains. Ownership of the railroad right-of-ways varies across the system. Many lines are at least partially owned by the individual counties but are managed by Metrolink. Metrolink's trains are all pulled by diesel-electric locomotives. Most of these are F-125 units built by EMD. Metrolink also uses Motive Power MP36 units, as well as a small fleet of F-59 PH locomotives, most of which were retired in 2020. The cars are all bi-level commuter coaches built by either Bombardier or Hyundai Rotem. Metrolink began service on just three of its current lines on October 26, 1992. More lines followed soon after. Prior to the formation of Metrolink, some demonstration commuter operations were offered in the greater LA area. The Aero is the newest commuter train in the US as of 2023. Aero service debuted on October 24, 2022. As previously mentioned, it is run as part of the Metrolink system under an operational agreement, but control of the service mostly resides with the San Bernardino County Transportation Authority. The service travels just shy of 10 miles from downtown San Bernardino to Redlands. Trains run daily with additional trips on weekdays. The last passenger service to operate between these two cities ended over 80 years ago. Equipment used for the Aero is a fleet of self-propelled diesel rail cars built by Stadler. In 2024, an additional car, powered by hydrogen fuel cells, is expected to join the fleet. Our final commuter train for this video is none other than San Diego County's Coaster. Coaster trains operate 42 miles in between Oceanside and downtown San Diego right along the Pacific Ocean. Trains run daily with several trips in each direction. The Coaster is managed by San Diego's North County Transit District, which also operates the Oceanside to Escondido Sprinter Hybrid Rail Passenger Service. Fares are broken into three zones of travel with one-way prices ranging from $5 to $6.50. Coaster received a total of 735,000 riders in 2022. Coaster trains are all locomotive hauled with Siemens Mobility SC44 charger units providing the power. The passenger car fleet consists of all bi-level cars built by Bombardier Transportation. Coaster service commenced on February 27 of 1995 under the official name of the Coast Express Rail. Planning for a commuter train in San Diego County dates back to the early 1980s. Well, that does it for this episode of Train Talk, as well as our three-part mini-series, 26 unique commuter railroads running all over the United States. There's so much more to talk about, but that will have to wait for many more future episodes. If you have any questions or comments you'd like to share, leave those down below in the comment section. A special thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. If you would like to receive notifications every time I post to YouTube, click on the subscribe button and select the receive all notifications option by ringing the bell. For even more great content, check out my other social media pages. And remember, Every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, there's an all-new railroading adventure headed your way right here on the YouTube channel. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching. <laughs>